The part of her that reminds us of the jungle is her mind. It's Mr. Ace and Jane now. Reminder, it's Vaughn Monroe with Colonel Stupnagel in charge of Laugh and Things tonight at 9.30. Columbia Broadcasting System, in cooperation with the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service, presents the new Mr. Ace and Jane program, a weekly half-hour comedy series starring radio's original comedy couple, The Aces. Once again, the strains of Manhattan Serenade introduce the story of Mr. Ace and his wife, Jane. Tonight, Chapter 3, entitled, Mr. Ace tells Jane he's bringing home an important client to dinner and warns Jane to be careful of what she says. And Jane replies, don't worry, I've got more brains in my little finger than I have in my entire head. And during dinner, she proves it. Or, as Mr. Ace puts it, how to grow old gracefully in one hour. The most fantastic thing happened to me. I'll tell you about it in just a minute. <laughs> You know, America's young men are the biggest, healthiest, best-educated young men in the world. Even so, the standards of today's Army and Air Force are so high that only 60% of these fine men can be accepted when they volunteer. Doesn't that give you a pretty good idea of the type of men that make up today's Army and Air Force? Well, if you need more proof, take a good, long look at the next soldier you see. Neat, clean-cut, resolute. Yes, you can put this in your pipe and smoke it. He's helping to do the most important job there is in America today. Yes, Mr. Ace, what was that you were going to tell us? Oh, uh, there comes a time in every man's life when he has to bring a prospective customer home to dinner. In a situation like that, a man likes to think of his wife as the little woman who helps him close the deal. I like to think of Jane that way. Uh, excuse me a minute while I do. Well, enough daydreaming. Even after 15 years of marriage, I still haven't learned enough to keep Jane out of my business affairs. I admit she always has my interests at heart. I always have his interests at heart. To help me put over a deal is to her a crowning achievement. To help him put over a deal is to me a crowning achievement. She's got me in the hollow of her hand. I've got him in the hollow of my head. <laughs> this, uh, this all started the other evening when we had just finished dinner. I had just polished off my second bowl of farina. Ulcers, you know. Advertising business. When once again I made the mistake of asking for Jane's help with a business client. A client for dinner? Oh, wonderful, dear. I love having your clients for dinner. Remember the last client we had? Whatever became of him? Uh, the psychiatrist says he'll be okay in another year. <laughs> he was more fun than a barrel. Yes. Did you ever get his advertising account, dear? Well, yes, finally. No thanks to you. You're welcome, dear. Mm. Now, who's this man we're going to work on now? Well, this man happens to be one of the biggest soap manufacturers in the business. It's the biggest account our agency ever tried to get. And, Jane, look, let's do this upright. I'd like to impress this man and his wife. She's coming, too. Let's get a maid for that night when they come here, huh? A maid? They're going to be here Friday night. Oh, dear, why do we need a maid? Aren't you satisfied with my cooking? Oh, of course I am. That's not the point. Aren't you satisfied with my housekeeping? Jane, the point is I want to impress these people. Now, will you go up to the employment agency and get a maid for Friday night? Dear, I just want to ask you one question, point black. Answer yes or no. When did you first become dissatisfied with my housekeeping? Uh, yes. Oh, so you are. No, no, I mean no. Well, I mean, you said answer yes or... Uh, isn't that awful? Why do I... Well, I guess I have to take the bitter with the better. Yes. Okay, I'll do it. But it's going to be embarrassing when I explain to them there's nothing wrong with my housekeeping. They were just putting on the rich. Okay, Rich. Explain it if you have to. Who are these people we're putting on the rich for? I told you, he makes one of the most popular kitchen soaps in the country. You know that soap called Did? Did soap? That's what he makes. He does? No, did. Did. <laughs> Don't mention any other soap in front of him. He gets furious. He does? Not does, Jane. Watch your language. <laughs> Well, you're all 
witnesses. All I said to Jane was, hire a maid, simple. I mean, simple, isn't it? But she had to worry about what the employment agency might think. When Jane walked in, the man at the agency was calm and collected. That is, he was calm at first. They collected him later. Good morning, madam. I'm Mr. Bennett, and what may I do for you? Just fine. Uh, yes. <laughs> is uh, someone taking care of you? Yes, there he is, but he doesn't appreciate me. What? First, I like to say I'm a wonderful cook, and I keep the house spotless. I wash, I mop, and I dust. So? Yes, and I sew. Uh, no. <laughs> No, no, I mean, so what? So what can I do for you? Well, isn't this an employment agency? Oh, of course, and I think I have just the woman for you. Oh, Mrs. Dale. Yes? Would you step over here, please? This young lady just came in, and from what she's told me, I think she might be just what you're looking for. How do you do, my dear? I'm pleased to meet your acquaintance. First, I want to say I'm a wonderful cook, and I keep the house spotless. I wash, I mop, and I dust. And the only reason I'm doing this is because of my husband. Oh, you're married? And who? You mean and how? No, and who do you think sent me here? Oh, oh, oh I see. Your husband. Yes. Tell me, my dear, have you had much experience? Oh, yes, I've had quite... No, I'm supposed to ask you that. Mr. Bennett, what does she say? I'm sure I don't know. Uh, young... Oh, what do you mean you don't know? If I'm going to hire a maid, the least I can do is ask her if she's had experience. And if I'm wrong, I'm not far from it. What? You're hiring me? Mr. Bennett, I was never so insulted in all my life. Oh, Mrs. Dale, I'm awfully sorry this happened. I thought she wanted a job as a maid. Well, so did I. To think she'd mistake me for a maid. But she said she could do her Oh, I get it now. Oh, I, I thought I she wanted a I job as a maid, and she thought I was my sister. <laughs> what a very big step. Imagine being a maid. But well, why not? This would show if somebody appreciates my housekeeping. To be or not to be. That is how was I to know? I'll be. Mrs. Dale, I'll do it. What? I'll take the job. You will? Yes. Well, that's wonderful. Can you come now? No sooner said the better. Oh, good. I have the car and chauffeur. My home is on Long Island. Uh, what's your name, my dear? Jane, uh, Jane Sherwood. Sherman? No, Sherwood. My maiden name. Oh, my maid name. <laughs> That's cute, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> oh, we're going to get along fine, Mrs. Dale. We'll be like a couple of Simonized twins. <laughs> and, uh, and so Jane was taken for a ride in a big black sedan. Taken for a ride. Hey, excuse me while I toy with that idea. Oh, there I go, daydreaming again. While the Simonized twins were winging their way over to Long Island, I was at my office conferring with my boss. That would be J.K. Norris of Sutton, Dutton, Mutton, and Norris. Advertising agency. What else? When Mr. Norris talks, he shoots proverbs at you like bullets. This morning he was particularly full of bullets. We were talking about landing the new dead soap account. You can catch more flies with honey than you can with vinegar, I always say. I told him that's why I was having the client for dinner. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, I always say. I said we'd have a big roast turkey. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, I always say. And when I said the dinner would be a turkey, I didn't know I wasn't kidding. Mr. Norris was in my office giving it to me hot and heavy. Now, Mr. Ace, I cannot impress upon you too strongly the importance of the new did soap account. You know yourself what an eccentric client T.J. is. I know. So I don't want anything to go wrong at that dinner, Mr. Ace. There's many a slip, twixt cup and lip, I always say. Yes, I know, Mr. Twix. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Norris. But there's nothing going wrong. Jane has even gone over to hire a maid for the occasion. Good, good. Oh, yes, one thing is very, very important. To T.J., there's nothing else in life but did soap. He sleeps it, he dreams it, he eats it. Mm -hmm. Maybe we shouldn't have turkey. Uh... <laughs> uh, what was that? I, I say I know how important did soap is to T.J. Important? Why do you think T.J.'s changing advertising agencies now? Only because one of the account executives over at Swinburne, Marshall, Warwick, Dad, Walter, Kensington, Hollingswood, and Vine made the mistake of mentioning a competitive soap in T.J.'s presence. No kidding. Who did that? I don't know. 
It was either Swinburne, Marshall, Warwick, Dad, Walter, Kensington, Hollingwood, or five. One of them mentioned another soap. No, but we'll, we'll be very careful. Don't worry about anything, Mr. Norris. Jane is making all the arrangements. Everything will be just fine. Well, if it isn't, this account will go to our competitors, Smith and Walters. Smith and Walters, an advertising agency with only two names? Not a chance. Are you kidding? <laughs> Quote, don't worry about anything, Mr. Norris. Jane is making all the arrangements and everything will be just fine. Unquote. That's what I said. That's what the man said. Well, when I got home that evening, I was anxious to learn how Jane did with hiring the maid. I opened the door, and I said, Jane, and she said that she wasn't home, and the phone was going like mad. Hello? Hello, dear. Jane, where are you? Just fine. <laughs> Jane, why aren't you home? What's happened? Well, dear, to make a long story. Yeah, don't make a long story. Where are you? On Long Island. Long Island? What are you doing out there? I can't talk now. I've got to hurry and serve dinner. Huh? I'm I've got an assistant, a Chinese houseboy. He's waiting for me to give him something to do. He ought to be useful as well as Oriental. Dinner's in ten minutes, and I've got to crack the ice for the blueprint oysters. Uh, what number are you calling? <laughs> Isn't that you, dear? Jane, what on earth are you talking about? Where are you? What, what did you do about hiring the maid? I took the job myself. You, you took what job? I'm a maid. I'm going to do housework. If a certain person doesn't appreciate my housework, it's high noon somebody did. Do you miss me? Jane, I told you I'm expecting a big client Friday night. You've got to be here. Friday night? Can't make it there. Can't make it? Jane, I've got to see you. When am I going to see you? Thursday. Maid, stay off. Maid, stay off. <laughs> Jane, where are you? Oh, I've got to hurry now, dear. The ice is getting cold. Goodbye, dear. No, no. Hello. Hello. Jane, isn't that awful? Jane? Jane, are you home? It's Ken. I've got something I want to... Uh, excuse me for stopping the action here, but I've got to introduce this new character. He's our next-door neighbor, Ken Roberts, radio announcer. You probably hear him on the radio all the time. Sounds like, uh... Like, uh... This show is brought to you by the Kismo Company, America's foremost manufacturers. Yes, for over 100 years, the Kismo Company is the manufacturing foremost. Make up commercials just to keep in voice. Try a four most. Or better still, try the large economy size, the five most. <laughs> the aim to listen to him by the hour. Remember, when using four most, use caution. Caution comes in six delicious flavors. <laughs> so, ladies, if four most persists, see your doctor. If your doctor persists, use caution. <laughs> Uh, now we can start the action again. Ken had just come in and said, Jane, I've got something I want to... Jane, I've got something I want to... Oh, hello, where's Jane? Jane had just taken a job... Oh, no, Ken, you won't believe this could happen. Oh, sure I will. I'm in radio. Everything happens in radio. Don't you listen to those cereals? All right, cereal. Jane Ace, girl pressure cooker. <laughs> don't believe that. What do you mean, girl pressure cooker? I mean, she took a job as a maid on Long Island. Maid? Gee, that's tough. I'm sorry to hear it. But that's the advertising business. One day you got a job, the next day your wife's working. No, no, look, Ken, I did not lose my job. Jane just lost her head. All I know is I come home and find my wife's gone and me slowly starving. Now I've got to get out to the kitchen and fix my dinner. Well, maybe I can help you. I'll go with you. What would you like for dinner? Well, let me see. I'd like some split pea soup, a steak with onions, mashed potatoes. Apple pie, cheese, and coffee. Gee, that sounds swell. Yeah, doesn't it? Uh, Ken, hand me that box of farina. <laughs> How do you make farina? Who knows? Let me see. I guess I better put this pan on the stove here. Gee, I sure miss James. I wanted to read of this commercial I'm doing on a show tonight. I guess it would be a shrewd move if I light this stove. Now, how do you do that? Maybe I could rehearse it for you. Would it disturb you? Disturb me? My wife working on Long Island as a maid with a bunch of Orientals diving for oysters with cracked ice and a big client coming to dinner on Friday and a turkey in the hand is worth two in the bush and you're going to disturb me? Read that commercial. Well, <clears throat> this is a message for all former members of the Army's famous 3rd Division. Whenever the 3rd Division is mentioned, there's a look of pride on the faces of men who were members of that outfit during the war. Where could I get a good mess, Sergeant? Matter of fact, any veteran will agree that the 3rd stacked up with the best of them. And it's still the same today. The 3rd Division rates way up high with the men of our new Army. That's why it's great news that right now, 
You veterans of the 3rd may enlist directly in the 3rd Division's 7th Infantry Regimental Combat Team, now located at Fort Benning, Georgia. I wonder where Jane's located. Yes, sir, you may return to security, good pay, interesting work, and the opportunity for fast advancement right with your old outfit. And for you other veterans who meet today's high standards for enlistment, there's also a chance for you in the 7th RCT, if you act fast and enlist under the limited quota system for that unit. Remember, too, that if you're a veteran with a needed technical skill, you may qualify for enlistment in grade, depending on your training and length of service. How do you like this stove here? Any way any veteran looks at it, it's worth looking into the many opportunities offered by your regular army. Your nearest recruiting office will help you make your choice. But who'll help you make this for real? <laughs> The next morning, I was having breakfast at my club. Club breakfast, number two, eight over. <laughs> but, uh, but Jane was serving a sumptuous repast out on Long Island. The way she explained it to me later, the first one down for breakfast was the master of the house. And what happened between him and Jane was really one for the book. A book that would have been banned in Boston. <laughs> it went something like this. Good morning, my dear. Yes, fine. And how does our new little maid like her job? Good morning. Oh, I see you finished your orange juice. I didn't hear you. What can I give you now, Mr. Dale? A little attention, my dear. What? My, what a pretty little hand. <laughs> oh, I bet you say that to all the hired hands. <laughs> Would you like some eggs, Mr. Dale? Oh, come now, Janie. Let's not be so formal. <laughs> oh, please. May I have my hand? Uh, do you like your egg scrambles, Mr. Dale? I like our maids to call me Daddy. <laughs> this job could be a very pleasant one, Janie, <laughs> if you know what I mean, my dear. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> Do you like your eggs fried? What color are your eyes, Janie? Soft boiled. <laughs> oh, we are going to get along fine, aren't we? You're going to call me Daddy, aren't you? But please, Mr. Dale, after all, your wife is a married woman. And I think I hear her coming downstairs now. Oh, <coughs> oh yes, yes. Well, uh, I've got to get to my office. Not a word about this, my dear. Just leave everything to Daddy. Not a word, no. I know. Dumb's the word. Listen, <laughs> my dear. Tom, haven't you gone yet? Just leaving, my dear. Have a nice day, my dear. Oh, yes. I'll see you at dinner. Good morning, Jane. Good morning, Mommy. Um, Mrs. Dale. I was just taking my hand out to the kitchen. I mean, I was oh, just... Now, don't bother about me, my dear. I just have this glass of orange juice. My figure, you know. Yes, isn't it? <laughs> oh, uh, Jane, come over here a moment. I was just over there. Now, about looks today, Jane, I... Well, I'm expecting a... Well, that is, uh, you see, about two or three days a week, I, I have lunch with a friend, a charming gentleman from South America. He He's teaching me the language. Oh, it's such a romantic language. Oh, we oui, oui. <laughs> Hey, we're taking up irregular verbs. Oh, my. And, well, it isn't that Mr. Dale would object. It's just that I'd rather, well, you you understand, don't you, Jane? You mean you want it to be strictly on to new and me? Yes, strictly on to <laughs> Yes, strictly, my dear. <laughs> I get it. Dumb's the word again. <laughs> And so Jane was sworn in as a member of the Long Island Secret Service. <laughs> of course, of all the homes on Long Island, Jane had to get into the home of a couple of great neckers. <laughs> but, uh, but I had my own problems. First, I had to change the dinner date with a client from Friday to Thursday because the maid's day off, I mean my wife's day off, was Thursday. Luckily, T.J. said that would be okay. Then I called the employment agency and arranged for a maid for Thursday. Now all I had to do was get Jane on the phone. Not knowing where she was working, I was sitting in my office contemplating calling the whole Long Island phone book from A to Zabisco when the phone rang. Hello? Hello, dear. Oh, Jane, I was just thinking about you. Just yes, fine. Uh, Jane, where are you? Are you back home? No, I'm still mating. 
Mating? Do you miss me, dear? Jane, look, I've changed the dinner date with my soap client to Thursday night because you can't make it Friday. This is the biggest deal I've ever tackled. Oh, biggest deal. Is that all this means to you? You don't say a word about missing me. All right, Jane, I miss you. And can't get along without me? All right, I can't get along without you. And? Go ahead. And what? Go ahead. Say everything that's in your heart. Left ventricle, right ventricle, left ventricle, right ventricle. <laughs> Well, I've uh, I've got half a mind to skip the dinner scene. It was gruesome. But I went through it, and so can you. It won't hurt too much. You'll only age three or four years. Here's the setup. It's five minutes before our guests are due to arrive. The maid I hired is in the kitchen, and I'm briefing Jane in the living room. Now, look, Jane, when T.J. gets here, we sit around for a few minutes and chat before dinner. And don't forget the name of his soap, Did. Did Soap. I know the soap. That's all they use at Mr. and Mrs. Dale's where I work. Yes, and be sure not to mention and uh... What, what was that? You, you didn't say Dale. Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Dale. They've got more soap uh, around Well, wait the house. just a minute. Uh, which Dale? Thomas Jefferson Dale. Thomas Je... T.J., you were... Is that... You mean... Is your collar too tight, Dad? Uh, Jane, uh, tell me quick. You worked for Thomas Jefferson Dale? Yes. Uh, do you know it? That's my client. That's T.J. That's the man who's coming here tonight with his wife. Well, of all th- Well, dear, you can knock me down with a fender. Don't tempt me. What do I do now? There goes my whole account. Mr. Bates, what time do you want me to start saving dinner? I want to be out of here by 9 o'clock. <laughs> I hope this ain't one of them all-night affairs. Uh, just a minute, Helen. We're having a predicament. A what? Mr. Ace and I just found out we have some common friends. Wait, wait, wait just a minute. Uh, time is running out. Helen. Yeah? Look, Helen, I haven't time to explain now, but you've got to do me a big favor. Jane, Jane, I want you to take Helen's place in the kitchen. You be the maid. Helen, you've got to be my wife. Now, just a minute. Wait a minute now. There's, a, there's an extra five in it for you. Five dollars, please. You have to do this. Jane, take her apron. What are you standing there for? Well, I'm trying to figure it out. You want me to be the maid? Yes, and you say you took a job here for one night on your night off. Helen, all you have to do is sit around and act as if you're Mrs. A's. Oh, I get it now. Well, that's pretty clever, dear. Do you think it'll work? If it doesn't, I won't. Take your apron. Uh, give me your apron, Helen. Okay, here, but everything's happening too fast for me. Too fast. All you have to do is act like a lady of the house, like my wife. You can do that, can't you? Like your wife? Sure. Taking your tie. Stop fighting your okay. man. Be careful of those okay. guys. Okay. <laughs> don't overdo it. Now, Jane, get, get out to the kitchen. Okay, dear. I hope they don't know me when I come out. I'll try to disguise my voice. Good luck, dear. Good luck, she says. I'll have to throw a seven the hard way. Oh, the door. I'll get it, Helen. Are you okay? I don't know what hit me, but I'll do the best I can. Okay. Well, there goes nothing. Well, good evening, T.J. Good evening, Mr. A. Uh, come in, come in. And Mrs. Dale, how do you do? I'm Mr. A. Good evening. Uh, go right in. Mrs. A is waiting. Uh, darling. Yeah? Uh, 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 darling, this is Mrs. Dale. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. A? Howdy. And, uh, and Mr. Dale. Good evening, Mrs. A. How do you do? I'll take your things, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sit down, folks. Uh, shall we have a little drink before dinner? Thank you. That'll be fine. <laughs> nice little place you have here. Well, thank right? you very much. Uh, sit down, won't you? Uh, Mrs. Right. Dale over here and, and T.J.? A lovely little apartment, isn't it, Martha? Oh, thank thank you. You. So bright and shiny. I suppose you use plenty of dead soap around here. Oh, sure, sure. Dead soap. Only dead. I use do. <laughs> What's that? Uh, darling, you mean did, of course. I used to did, now I used to. Mr. <laughs> uh, is this your idea of a joke? I, I assure you it isn't. Uh, darling, please, you use did. I ought to know what kind of soap I use. I use enough of it. Do does what did used to do, but doesn't anymore. <laughs> Mr. Ace, I bid you good evening. No, no, I no, have some coat, please. Uh, no, no, just a minute, Mr. please. Mr. Ace, you are quite obviously not the man for my account. 
Come up. Oh, no. I want to insult in all my life. Right with uh, you, Just Tom. a minute, please. I can explain this whole thing. Listen, listen. This woman is not my wife. What? What? Well, I, I mean, look. Uh, no. My wife is in the kitchen. And you're going to be surprised when I tell you why. My, uh, my wife is, is your maid. What? What did he say? Yes, your maid. She took a job with you. She didn't know who you were. I just found out this evening. Uh, a minute ago. I, I was trying to cover it up. Honestly, it's the truth. I'll prove it to you. Uh, Jane. Jane? Well, that's our new maid's name. Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Jane? Oh, oh, here she is. Jane? Yeah, how's the boss? Somebody call for Jane. <laughs> They, they know about it. This, this is my wife, aren't you, Jane? I had a day off, so I took a job. No, 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 no. It's all over. It's uh, all over. They know about it. Jane, Jane, are you married to this man? Yes, I am, Mrs. Dale. Tom, this man is evidently emotionally unstable. Two wives, both me. Oh, no. <laughs> Good night, Mr. H, and goodbye. But, Mr. Dale, please. Good night, Jane, and you didn't come back to your job, of course. Good night, Mrs. Ace. Uh, good night, Daddy. What was that? What did she say? Uh, Daddy knows what I said. <laughs> no, so, my dear, maybe we've been a little hasty. Thomas Jefferson Dale, if you give this man your account, I'll leave you. Oh, but my dear. Uh, going to South America, Mrs. Dale? Uh, what? Uh, what's this? Well, I mean, uh, uh, Tom, perhaps you're right. Perhaps we have been a little hasty. Uh, just what I was thinking. <laughs> Well, Mr. Ace, how about those drinks we were going to have? Drinks? Oh, oh, sure. What's going on? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Uh, Helen, uh, Helen, bring in the dead martinis. Uh, I mean the dry martinis. <laughs> And so it comes to pass that a man's wife could be a big help to him in his business. Of course, my wife has to go by way of Omaha, but she gets that. <laughs> and I was appreciative. The day after we got the account, I offered her a reward. Oh, I don't want to think, dear. I think every wife should help her husband all he can, whenever she needs something. Uh, I won't even try to figure that out. But uh, I want to get you something, Jane. What do you want? Well, if you insist, how about some hose? Get me a didden pair of hose. A what? A didden pair of hose. You mean a dozen pair of hose? Dear, I saved the soap account for you once. Please watch your life. Oh, yes, Jane. I'm sorry. <laughs> In just a moment, I'll give you the title of Chapter 4 of the story of Mr. Ace and Jane. Remember this, young men. There is no finer career than an Army or an Air Force career. It offers you a continuing education, the chance to learn a valuable technical skill, the opportunity to see the world, which is a broad education in itself. Now, let's look at the practical side, too. Army and Air Force pay, with its extra benefits and allowances, is better than average civilian pay. On top of that, there's retirement pay that leaves you sitting pretty all your life. Drop in at the United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station nearest you and get the rest of this important story. You'll be mighty glad you did. Mr. Ace and Jane will bring you Chapter 4, entitled, Jane Discovers Hidden Talent in a Newsboy, and Mr. Ace has a client interested in putting on a radio program, so Jane puts two and two together, gets a hooper of 4.6, and before Mr. Ace can stop her, Jane has a discovery on the air. Or, as Mr. Ace puts it, to air is human, to forgive divine. Good night. Me too. <laughs> Goodman Ace, original music conducted by Morris Sutton. In the supporting cast tonight were John Griggs as Mr. Dale, Evelyn Barton as Mrs. Dale, Kurt Kelton as Helen, Cliff Hall as Mr. Bennett, Eric Dresper as Mr. Norris, and this is Ken Roberts announcing that you may hear Chapter 4 of Mr. Ace and Jane 
next week at this time over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. This is WCBS New York. Did you enjoy hearing Mr. Ace and Jane? You'll enjoy seeing them, too. If you'd like free studio tickets for a future broadcast, write Mr. Ace and Jane, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. They'll be mailed promptly.